we will be performing the modified Thomas test. The modified Thomas test can be used as a muscle length assessment when hip flexor tightness is indicated. The modified Thomas test can differentiate between tight tissues, specifically the rectus femoris and iliopsoas muscles, but also the sartorius and tensor fasciolata. Some contraindications for this test are to make sure to clear the low back, hip, and knee as you will be moving them in different directions and also you would like to assess sitting balance. The modified Thomas test tells you about the relative tightness in both one and two joint hip flexors, specifically the iliopsoas and the rectus femoris. Differentiating which muscle is limited is seen with variations in thigh and knee positions. These are the thigh either on or off the mat, the knee bent or extended, and rotation and abduction of the leg. In a study by Peeler et al. looking at the psychometrics of the modified Thomas test, values for pass-fail scoring for range of motion of the hip were studied. In this study, pass was no tightness of the iliopsoas or the rectus, and fail was tightness in either the iliopsoas or the rectus. This study found an intra-rater reliability of 0.47 and an inter-rater reliability of 0.39. They also determined ICC values for this test, an intra-rater of 0.52 and an inter-rater of 0.60. When performing the modified Thomas test, these are the main points that are important to keep in mind. You want to support the patient back into the supine position, ensure patient self-stabilization with contralateral hip flexion, stabilization by the physical therapist at the pelvis to prevent any additional posterior pelvic tilt, leg position to determine muscle length, and you want to, in the end, support the patient back to seated position. In this video, it is important to remember that our physical therapist steps away for the sake of the video, and in a clinical scenario, you would want to be at the patient's side at all times for safety. As with all tests, you would make sure to do bilaterally and compare results on each side. So Matt, we're going to be doing a test to look at the length of your rectus femoris and your iliopsoas. Um, before we get started, I want to make sure that you don't have any lower back or knee or hip problems. Nope. Okay, so after clearing those areas, we are going to make sure that the patient is positioned with his thighs off the table. He's just sitting on the edge of the plinth. You're going to support the lower back and come underneath the knees. Also, for the purposes of the video, I may be stepping away at times just so that you can see exactly uh, the position of his thighs and knees. However, in a clinical setting, you need to ensure patient safety by remaining at their side. So here I am coming underneath the thighs, keeping him in some hip flexion and knee flexion, supporting the lower back as we lower down. Good. So once we get here, you're going to make sure that he's in 10 degrees of posterior pelvic tilt. Instruct the patient to push their lower back down into the ground or into the mat. So Matt, what I want you to do is really think about pushing your lower back down, getting rid of that natural arch that is there. From here, you're going to have the patient stabilize the non-test leg, maintaining that 10 degrees of posterior pelvic tilt and about 100 degrees of hip flexion. If the patient's unable to do that, you can provide that stabilizing force as well. So now that we're ready to test, I'm going to be stabilizing here at the pelvis, making sure that there's no um, anterior pelvic tilt, and you're going to be lowering that leg off the table with a flexed or relaxed knee, rather. You'll see here that Matt's thigh, again as I step away, is flush with the table. His knee is at about 100 degrees of flexion, which is normal. He doesn't have any tightness here. However, I'm going to show you where I would expect his leg to be if he did have some tightness. So we're coming down. If his thigh was not flush with the table, we would, be, uh, we would suspect, suspect that there is some tightness. So in order to determine whether that tightness is coming from iliopsoas or rectus femoris, we'll be coming down with an extended knee, still monitoring the pelvis here. As we lower down, if his thigh is able to be flush with the table, with the knee fully extended and the rectus femoris on slack, we would assume that the tightness is due to rectus femoris shortening. So in order to just really determine that that is where the tightness is coming from, as I step away, you'll see that I will flex the knee 
with my hip, and you would expect his thigh to come up off the table like this, indicative of rectus tightness. On the other hand, you could come down with the extended thigh, and if the thigh remained up off the table with the knee on in extension, that would be indicative of iliopsoas tightening. Some additional considerations are to make sure that the leg stays in the sagittal plane. If there's lateral rotation and abduction, this may indicate sartorius tightness. On the other hand, medial rotation and abduction may inter indicate tensor fasciolata tightness. So now that we've completed the test and determined that Matt doesn't have any shortness in his right leg, we're going to bring him up, supporting his back and under the thigh, maintaining that hip and knee flexion as we come up. Great. And that is how you perform the modified Thomas test.